Welcome and thank you for joining us for part one of dealing with enforcement notices. My name's Sylvia Wright and I'm part of the Finch support team. And today we're going to be finding out about improvement notices and prohibition notices. And I've got Sue Dearden with me, who's a specialist health and safety solicitor here at Finch. And hopefully she's going to answer all of my questions. So Sue, uh, can you tell me first what is an improvement notice or prohibition notice and when might you expect to receive one? Thanks, Sylvie. Um, yeah, the enforcement notices will typically be served by the health and safety executive or an environmental health officer in the local authority when the inspector, the health and safety inspector, forms the view that someone is breaching health and safety duties or requirements or has previously breached them and is likely to do so again. So for an improvement notice, nothing more is needed. You don't need to have put anyone at risk of injury. You just need a breach of the uh, duties. Okay. Uh, for a prohibition notice, though, the breach needs to be one that involves the risk of serious personal injury. Now, you might receive a notice on a routine inspection visit, which happens periodically. The HSC will have a list of uh, industries that it prioritises. Um, but otherwise, every few years you can expect a visit. Uh, they will also um, uh, pop in or pick things up from time to time when they're walking past, particularly construction sites, okay. where they'll see somebody working without a hard hat or not attached and working at a height and, and so on. So, so they can pick things up walking past or they can pick things up when they come in to investigate an accident, yeah. um, having been notified and uh, uh, the, the reporting regulations, which require accidents of, of a particular degree of severity to be notified, and that will then trigger an investigation. So um, the inspectors can be in for all sorts of reasons. They've got a right of access, and the notices that they can serve will specify what the issue is and why the inspector is of the view that a health and safety regulation or statute has been breached and will direct, in the case of a prohibition notice, that activities to which the notice relates uh, will not be continued without the issue being put right. Um, prohibition notices typically have immediate effect because of the risk of injury. Uh, improvement notices, though, generally won't stop work immediately, but will require action to be taken within a defined period, 28 days, say, or 30 days, to rectify the breach. So um, a, a notice isn't a court process then? No, that's right. Inspectors carry these pads of notices and can write them and issue them on the spot in the same way that the police can issue them if you, if you get stopped for um, a, a traffic offence. Is there any um, financial pen penalty with the service of a notice? That's a good question. Um, and the short answer is that no, not directly. There isn't a financial penalty. There's no, it's not a fixed penalty notice. Um, however, compliance with a notice can be expensive. Uh, for example, if something needs to be designed and fabricated to change a machine to eliminate a nip point or you know, to guard a particular uh, part, that can take time and it can shut down the line um, until that's been done. So it can be expensive. Um, and if it's the HSE which has served the notice, then the HSE and the HSE alone has the power to recoup its costs for the time spent in writing the notice and visiting and so on mm. uh, through fees for intervention invoices. Okay. And if in the future you're prosecuted for a health and safety offence, typically the prosecution will refer back to these notices as evidence of poor health and safety record, which would, uh, you know, a good health and safety record would be a mitigating factor, but they will say this is evidence that you had to have an intervention uh, and, and it will increase the penalty that's imposed in many cases. So, or in summary, although service of a notice doesn't directly impose uh, a, a penalty on you, um, there are several ways in which it can have a significant financial impact. Okay, so um, how do you avoid being served a notice? What can you do to avoid being in this position? <laughs> well, 
It's difficult because health and safety duties are very wide and very subjective. Um, you know, you've got in most organisations, obviously, people are involved doing the work and people typically don't do everything right 100 percent of the time, no matter how much you train them. Um, so if an inspector wants to find a breach in most organisations, I think they could walk in and find one. So. Um, if you can be positive in your attitude when dealing with them, that can go a long way because just because there's a breach doesn't mean they have to take enforcement action. They've got a discretion. Yeah. And if they can see that you're auditing your own procedures and processes, that you're taking health and safety seriously, it's led from the top down, you've generally got your documentation in good order and it's organised and people are trained and um, you've got risk assessments in place and safe systems of work and so on, then you're less likely to receive a notice even if a breach is identified. They might just say, that needs sorting with and they will accept your assurance that it will be sorted. Um, so uh, an, another way in which typically a notice will be issued is that the inspector goes in following an accident and if you're in that position and the inspector is coming in to investigate what has happened don't wait to be told what to do. Some people think you've got to wait for the inspector to come in and you may be issued with um, a notice to leave uh, things involved with the accident undisturbed, but right. that doesn't mean that you can't look at your procedures around what's being done. It doesn't mean you can't get um, things in place to ensure that there isn't a risk at the time he comes in and that there is not a risk going forwards. And if you take those elements away, he hasn't got grounds to serve a notice. Might not stop him prosecuting for the events that led to the accident, but he won't serve you with a notice. That's really interesting. Thanks, Sue. Um, so if that fails and you get a notice anyway, what can you do about it? That depends. Um, what you can do and what you ought to do can be different. So commercially, uh, whether or not you feel that the notice was justified, the most economic option may be just to comply. Um, and if you do elect to comply, you can write to the inspector to say that you have complied or you will be complying, but that that compliance shouldn't be taken as acceptance that the notice was properly or justifiably issued. And that might help you if you're prosecuted at some point in the future from being used as an aggravating feature against you, if there is some doubt about whether or not that notice should properly have been served at that particular juncture. Um, if you've been given 30 days, for example, to comply, within that period for compliance, you can negotiate with the inspector about uh, the terms of the notice. So it can be any term. It may be that they've misunderstood something and got it right uh, uh, and they can rectify it, or you may just simply need more time to comply. As long as you're within that window of compliance, they've got the power to alter it. Okay. But that power disappears the minute the period for compliance has expired. So you can, you can deal with it that way. So you can comply or negotiate a, a, a changes in terms if there's a period for compliance. Uh, but if you fail to comply, it's a criminal offence which will be prosecuted. So really your options are comply, negotiate and comply, or you can appeal. Okay. Um, and do you appeal to HSE or to the court? Weirdly, neither. Um, the notices that you want to appeal are taken to the local employment tribunal. Okay. So I know that there's no fee payable to the tribunal when making an appeal. But what would be the grounds on which an appeal could be made? Well, there's a bit of strategy that comes into this. Um, you might want to lodge an appeal for tactical reasons only, particularly as there's no cost for issuing your appeal. Um, it, so it, you might lodge an appeal not necessarily because you think you might win. Um, with an improvement notice, lodging an appeal will automatically suspend the impact of the notice until the appeal is determined. So if you just need more time to comply and the inspector isn't willing to agree it, if you lodge the appeal, then you can withdraw the appeal later, but it will buy you time. Um, if the notice being appealed is a prohibition notice, which is normally of immediate effect, lodging the, the appeal won't suspend the notice because the prohibition notices are more serious and you will need to make an application to the tribunal to achieve a suspension of the notice 
Um, but in, to succeed with such an application, you will need to show that no one will be put at risk in the intervening period. Um, and a speedy expert report will often really help with that. Which is where I know the Finch experts come in. Finch has a range of engineering, occupational hygiene and health and safety experts. Some of our experts used to be HSE inspectors themselves, so we've certainly got the expertise here at Finch Consulting to help you. Join us in part two of Dealing with Enforcement Notices, where we're going to be looking at the appeal process. Thank you.